Hi, my name is Srinath, and here at the ANU, I study a Bachelor of Science Psychology and a Bachelor of Finance. Today, we're going to be going over two-dimensional projectile motion. In the first part of this video, we'll be doing the experiment itself, and in the second part, we'll be going over some calculations related to the experimental results. So, for the experiment, first, you're going to set up your elastic band, but uh, like we have, or otherwise, between two objects, so it has tension. This we are going to use to slingshot a ball and we're going to be tracking its motion as it goes through the air and it lands and then we're going to do some calculations based off our results. For this experiment you'll need some help. So first form, form up some groups of three to four people and then we can get started. One person in your team will be responsible for launching the ball. A second person will be holding the tape measure, as you'll see me do soon, and a third person should be recording this happening. This will allow for a couple of things. The person recording will be able to tell the time, confirm the landing spot, and also be able to confirm the height of the projectile motion. After a few attempts, or a little more than a few attempts, you'll be able to get a good, good and usable shot. During this time, it may be beneficial to adjust the elastic band or adjust the placement of your projectile in order to get more usable results. Also, it may be difficult to read the height of, of a video camera or a phone camera. Therefore, it may be just easier for someone to estimate the height using their own eyes because the best cameras of all are your eyes. The next step will be to measure how far the landing point is away from your launch point. In our case, 167 centimeters away. So from that, we can base our calculations. Also, we're able to uh, determine that the maximum height of the projectile was 22 centimeters. Now time for part two. Now we're going to go on to the calculations based off our experimental results. First off, we're going to start by noting down what our results were. So first, we have the height which we'll call H, equals 22 centimeters. Then the R, R will be the displacement along the X axis. And that'll be 167 centimeters. So what we're gonna be calculating first is the angle of release. To do that, we take this formula. V squared equals U squared plus 2AS. In this case, U is the vertical velocity, A is the acceleration, which will be equal to 9.82 which is gravity's constant acceleration, and S will be the max height. This is because we're going to set V squared equals to zero, as v, v will equal zero at the max height of the projectile's path. So therefore, we're left with 0 equals u squared plus 2as. Then we can substitute what we know. When we substitute the values into this, we get 0, 0 equals u squared plus 2 times 9.82 times 22. But because this is a constant deceleration, this becomes negative. So it's negative 9.82.
Then when we rearrange this, we get u squared equals 432.08, and we get u equals the square root of 432.08. And this equals 20.7865. Or if we were to round it, 20.79. This gives us one half of the information that we need to calculate the angle of release. What this gives us here is this the opposite side of the angle of release. That is equal to 20.79. This hypotenuse here will be equal to the initial velocity of the object from the release point, equivalent to 25 meters per second. What we can say then is that the angle of release is equal to sine theta 20.79 over 25, which will equal roughly 0 0.83. When we take the inverse sine of this, 0 0.8316, that equals approximately, approximately 56 degrees 15 minutes. So that concludes the second part of this experiment and the experiment overall. Hopefully you had just as much fun as with it as we did. Thank you.